Hey everybody, today we're going to be tying the Jig Golden Retriever. This is a variation of one of our more popular selling flies and one of our best producing flies, uh, the Golden Retriever. Tied in a variety of colors. Most popular size is a size 10 on a 3x long streamer hook, the 532nd gold bead. We like these uh, jig versions. Uh, the TMC 413J hook, it's actually a, a big nymph hook. Corresponds well to the size 10 3x long streamer hook. As you can see here, very similar in length on those bodies there. What we like about the jig version is uh, the way that it is keeled with that tungsten bead and the lead rides hook point up extremely well in the water column. So for contact nymphing, um, swinging the fly, or even fishing it like a streamer, uh, it's not gonna hook up nearly as bad as a traditional streamer tied to ride with the hook point down. Also, these hooks have a slightly larger hook gap as well. So hookups can be a little bit better <clears throat> on the fly. So with that hook, we use 530 seconds slotted tungsten bead. Fulling Mill uh, makes excellent quality beads uh, and a wonderful price at $6.95 for a 25 pack. Difficult to beat. Thread using uh, Danville's flat wax nylon. Covers the hook, covers the lead that we use on the body. 25 thousandths lead generally with this size fly. And give it the appropriate weight to get down where you need it. Um, very simple fly, it only requires two other materials, marabou and estaz. Quickly on the marabou, you've got a couple choices and feathers you can pick from. Uh, there is a difference in these materials, um, your standard strung marabou and your woolly bugger marabou. Your strung marabou tends to be a lot larger feather, very long, thin fibers. You can see when I pull this back, if I were to make a tail, it's actually pretty sparse. The material is thin, uh, the fiber is a little bit more stiff, uh, not nearly as webby as what you would get on a feather from the woolly bugger marabou. Uh, one feather, whether you're tying a retriever or any bugger patterns, makes a really good kind of full bushy tail. Uh, and a package of the marabou, we generally have enough feathers for at least 50 flies. And that body material again is Estaz. It's a corded material, kind of like chenille. Cord is very, very strong. You can put a lot of pressure on this. Um, one key thing about this material is it is directional. What I mean by that is, is if you uh, palmer it around the hook in such a way, you can see here on this fly, the material curls back towards the back of the fly. If you want that effect, you're going to tie the material in with its fibers pointing down. If you can see here, majority of the fibers are angled down. You'll tie this in if you're a right-handed angler or tire and palmer it forward to get that effect. If you notice that the material is, is not laying properly or is actually curling forward, you will want to reverse which angle or which side you tie it in on. So you have two choices. You can tie it in here or here. Again, tie it in with the material laying down, palmer it forward, pull in nice and tight and you'll have a great body. So we'll go ahead and get started on how to tie this very effective but extremely simple pattern. All right, so we're gonna get started tying the jigged version of the Golden Retriever. We are using uh, the, the TMCO TMC413J. It's a nymph hook, um, size eight. This is one of the larger um, sizes in this hook. Um, very similar to the traditional um, 3x long streamer hook that we would use for the golden retriever. We do like the fact that um, these nymph jig hooks do have a little bit wider gap on them. 
Um, we're going to be using the Fulling Mill uh, slotted tungsten beads. Uh, 530 seconds is the correct size for that hook size. And at 695, um, those beads again are hard to beat. We're using uh, Danville's flat wax nylon in red. Uh, we're going to tie a gold one, so we're going to be using standard gold Estaz. Uh, woolly bugger marabou that matches in tan. And we're going to start by attaching our 25 thousandths lead. We're going to run our lead from the point of the hook up to the bead. So most of the hook shank, when we get up to that bead, we're just going to pop it off there. Wind that little tag around so we don't have any waste. And then the gap that we have between the point here and the barb is where we're going to start our thread. And that is also where we are going to tie in our marabou. So once we build a little dam of thread behind the lead, we're going to come here and we're going to cover all of that lead just so that underbody, that red color kind of bleeds through. Advance back to the end, and that is where we're going to tie in our marabou tail. So this woolly bugger marabou is great because generally one feather makes one really nice tail. And we're going to go about um, one length of the hook shank plus a quarter or plus a half, depending on how much tail you want there. I usually run about a quarter. I'm gonna tie that in nice and tight right on top. We're gonna come in here and cut as much of that bulk out. And we're essentially filling that little gap that we had um, between the barb and the point there. Um, so when we wrap our S taz, your body is fairly symmetrical and uniform, so you don't have any odd lumps and bumps. All right, now to attach our S-Taz. As we discussed before, S-Taz is directional, so we wanna make sure that the fibers are kind of generally going down where we tie it in, so when we wrap forward, it's gonna curl backwards towards the back of the fly. We'll remove a little bit of the material and expose um, that core there. We will tie that in just right on the side. Get that on nice and snug, advance your thread forward to the bead. And now, generally we're gonna run about seven turns. Um, I use two hands a lot of times when I'm wrapping my S-Taz forward with any flies. I don't use the rotary feature a lot because I'm putting a tremendous amount of tension on this. So I'm actually holding the thread in place. And if you're doing it right, you should almost feel the material almost burning your, your finger a little bit. Get it on there wrapped nice and snug. That will ensure that these wraps stay in place and don't shift or slide forwards or backwards after you catch a bunch of fish. Some people throw a little layer of glue down, UV or Loctite or whatever they prefer. You can do that. If you tie it in nice and tight, you shouldn't have any issues. A couple securing wraps behind that cord and then pull everything back. A couple wraps to secure it in the front. I'll take those scissors and I'll cut that strand up close. And we will come in and just throw a whip finish there right in the front, that nice little red collar. You can, again, you can throw some glue down or you can throw a second one there if you prefer. And come in and get that thread. And there's our fly. Again, the nice thing about this guy is it will ride hook point up through the water column. Uh, it'll sink really fast with that 
lead and that tungsten bead on there. Um, great anchor fly for contact nymphing, uh, dead drifting through, or you can strip it along like a streamer. But that's it, that is the jigged golden retriever.